Hi everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Robin Fowler and I'm a senior sleep therapist uh, at Sleep Clinic Services and I've been working for Sleep Clinic Services for over a decade now so there isn't much I don't know about the ins and outs of CPAP therapy and, and of course some of the difficulties that patients can experience. Um, I'm also a CPAP user so I do understand the frustration that can happen especially when we're getting used to something completely foreign to us. One of the things that happen uh, with mask leakage that we see on CPAP reports is that a patient that has been normal range apnea, um, their apnea score starts to, to creep up and it might end up getting into the mild range of apnea, which is not good. So um, what is happening here is that the, uh, the pressurised air is going straight in, in the nose, for example, and then straight out the mouth. Um, or straight out the sides of the mask. So when that occurs, then the CPAP unit has to compensate by increasing the pressure to possibly an uncomfortable level, and that is to hold the airway open. Um, so you know that may that's just going to in, in, uh, make the the mask leakage even worse. So this is why it's so important, and why I say it will start to affect your therapy if you're getting a lot of mask leakage occurring. I feel it's best to start with fitting the mask properly. Now, it doesn't matter if you get a, a mask professionally fitted for you, you know, by the time you get home and into bed and you've got it all set up nicely and you roll over or you bump it during your sleep, what's going to happen is that you're going to get mask leakage. So we all need to know how to fit our masks correctly. Now what I do and what I suggest for patients that are experiencing mask leakage difficulties is to do this on a nightly basis, it won't take long. So just fit the mask on its own, meaning don't have that long heated breathing tube um, attached to it at the time because that's going to add a bit of drag and weight to that mask. So remove that and just put the mask on, loosen all the straps off and then just readjust comfortably firm and I do mean comfortably firm. These masks do not need to be tight. You don't need to be getting all that mask marks on your face or getting tension headaches. So only ever comfortably firm. So once that, once you feel comfortable in the, in the mask, then you can hook back up your heated breathing tube and then turn the unit on. Now I suggest that you lay on your back first just to experience if you can feel any, any mask leakage coming from the perimeter of the mask. You'll experience that by feeling air leakage up near your eyes or down near your mouth generally. If you do, then just readjust the strap that's closest to that that closest to that leak, and it might only be minutely that you're just adjusting it a millimeter or two. Okay, so just see how that goes, and then I'd like you to then move over onto your side and make sure that your head is positioned comfortably on your pillow. The only thing here is you've got to make sure that you found the sweet spot where head is resting nicely and comfortably on the pillow, but the pillow isn't encroaching onto where the mask is sitting up against your face. Okay, otherwise, it's just going to create a leakage problem. So get yourself nice and comfortable on both sides so that you get used to where to position your head on your pillow. Now, people often ask me, what's the best way to to wash your mask. For me, uh, I like things nice and simple, so all I do is once a week, usually on a Saturday morning, I'll, I'll wash the equipment and um, I just use warm soapy water, just a, a mild soap, and give it a good clean out. And where the headgear is, is concerned, I like to just pop that into an intimates bag and um, that can just go in with the normal wash. And then when the washing cycle's finished, I just take it out and pop it onto a, um, a clean, dry hand towel and just leave it on the dining room table to, to air dry during the day. And that's all I do with the mask. Um, now, 
The manufacturers of CPAP uh, consumables, they recommend a new mask should be um, purchased on a 12 monthly basis. If you've been keeping your masks really clean and so forth, um, then absolutely fine, no problems. But if you start to find that your mask or you're tightening the mask more and more with the straps, it means that they've lost their elasticity just through the normal wear and tear. Uh, oils and perspirations, washing, that sort of thing. So um, if, you're, if you've got to that stage and you're tightening and tightening and tightening, they have lost their elasticity and it's time to replace at least the straps, um, if not the whole mask. Uh, just like getting your car serviced on a, a 12 monthly basis, you might get new spark plugs and air filters and all that sort of thing. So it's the same sort of principle. Um, you get your car serviced so that you know it's running smoothly to get you from A to B on a daily basis. Um, it's no different for, for your health and I personally think your health is more important than your car. So um, do ensure that your all your consumables, your equipment um, is always kept in a pristine position, in a pristine condition, as best as you possibly can, so that you get the longest wear out of everything. So, if if you need any further help on this issue, just call us um, on in Australia on one three hundred two four six six three seven, or email at info at sleep clinicservices.com or you can also have a look at our website at www.sleepclinicservices.com um, and you know as I always say that snoring and sleep apnea should be treated not tolerated so any issues at all I want to know about them okay all right thanks for your time I hope you enjoyed it and I'll do another one for you soon